Hello DevOps people, how is everyone? Welcome to Fullstack Live, my live coding stream where I do all kinds of DevOpsy things. Today I'm going to do a bit of uh, Ruby on Rails work, uh, working on our hosting user interface. And um, yeah, before we start, I hope everyone's good. I'm, I'm pretty good. A bit, uh, bit distracted because uh, my streaming software acted up. That's also why I'm about uh, 15 minutes late and I apologize. But um, that's how things work, I guess. Software, how does it even work? Um, apart from that, yeah, I've been mostly working on chef cookbooks in uh, my recent streams, so this will be an interesting change uh, for me too, uh, because um, I need to get my mind back on, on Rails coding, and uh, that's a, a bit different from uh, chef automation. And um, yeah, so let's see. Maybe um, I'll simply start with uh, cleaning up a recent merge request that I'm not sure uh, where I'm not sure if it's uh, already been merged and um, maybe that helps me to get into things. As always I'd like these sessions to be interactive so if there's anything you'd like to ask, if something is unclear, if you'd like to have me explain something or if there is any feedback you have for me um, please let me know and uh, simply hop into chat and uh, ping me. So, uh, without further ado, let's get coding. All right, so here I have a branch 502 API token, and um, I'm not sure if I've merged this already. So let's get my notes out of the way and let's see there is still a lingering merge request oh yeah and it says show api token on user page interestingly enough oh that's a merge request 486 but it's a issue number 502 yeah okay So I guess, um, since this uh, has been lying here for a few days, I can simply go ahead and merge it. And let's see if the deployment pipeline can successfully deploy it to our staging instance. So, just to give you a bit of uh, context, this is um, the Project Dashboard API, and uh, that's my company's only Ruby on Rails project, at least uh, the only uh, production one. Um, and it's the user interface for our hosting platform, Frysteelbox. And um, so, this is the monolithic application where people can um, manage their websites and their clusters um, either um, via web UI or um, uh, via a rudimentary API. And since more customers start working uh, with our API, um, this merge request make sure they can see their API token in their user account page so that they can copy and paste it into their API client. Not a complex change, simply a more or less a, a, a change to a Rails view, but useful. Let's take a look how far our test is progressing. Okay, we're still installing gems. Oh, 
Okay, while this is working, I can take a look at our milestones, especially the user-centric world milestone, because that shows me what I'll have to do next. So, create a direct association between websites and users. This issue is pretty old and should be resolved by now. I'm pretty sure that has been resolved. This might be a duplicate issue. Okay. There is no other issue associated with it, however. Pretty sure there was a user association issue that I've already closed. Associate user with websites. This is uh, number 478 and has been closed two months ago. 478. And it's pretty hot in here. I'm really sweating. Whew. Um, okay, so that's the old one, right? So we can... 478, right? So we can close this as well. Good. And let's go back to the milestone. So. Um, in terms of associating users with websites, which happens at the moment in a very roundabout way, and uh, these issues here are user stories, um, they um, aim at making a direct asso association between users and websites. Um, so the next step would be to assign a website owner whenever a website gets created. So I guess number 483 should be the next issue to tackle. Let's take a look at our CI pipeline. That's still running, but it's already in the deployment phase, so it should be finished soon. And uh, I can now uh, check out master, pull my merged changes. Just two changes, a change in the view and a change in our feature flags. Um, so I can delete the 502 branch and spin off a new branch 483 website owner Let's open up code. Deployment is still running, but let's finish this. Let's let this finish by itself. Okay, so website and owner. How does this work?
all websites are assigned to a cluster because uh, our hosting platform is geared towards high performance and high availability which means uh, there is a whole cluster of machines running the websites um, and clusters already have a create website method You know, before I get into um, the implementation, let's write a test. So here we have the test for create website. And we already test if it passes its default edge rotor address, it passes its default varnish configuration, and it assigns a default runtime version. Okay, so what it should do as well is it assigns the current user as the owner. We'll have to create a cluster. And then we'll call create website. We'll also create a user. Should separates the test setup from the text test exercise, which means that create website should stand on its own in the middle here. So, um, um, and now, um, expect. Site owner to equal user, something like this. Of course, this can't work at the moment because um, Create Website does not have any idea that we'd like to associate the user, but. Um, that's basically how it's supposed to work in the end. Now, I'll have to find out how my website user association is built at the moment. Oh, website user. Oh, yeah, website user role is important as well. But uh, let's see, it belongs, has many website user roles.
And, by the way, it should also... ...as many users through website user role. Because website user role is the connecting table between websites and users. up our development environment first. Docker Compose up. Let's initialize the database. App break db nuke. Let's see, does website already have some kind of uh, special... Oh, we have a duplicity here. We already have users, so let's call this uh, website users. And I think that needs class user or something like this. Some Rails guides um, associations. sense, I guess.
guess I need a more advanced uh, active record association. No, that's our, that's what I have on screen. I think I remember seeing an example of how this works. Again. name that's what I was looking for class name and then a string okay class name user If we go into the Rails console, we do have users. That's the whole company, basically. That's the old way users were modeled. And uh, the website should also have website users. Okay. I'm missing an S here. Still doesn't work. Could not find the source as a website user or website users in model website user role. Of course not. Um, what? Cluster users. Of course, we are missing an H here. Hey, QP. 
welcome back. Happy to see you on stream. Stream. Use source instead of class name. Let me look that up so I get a feeling how this is meant to work. Source and source type. Source specifies a source association name for a has one through association. We don't have a has one through, we have a has many through though. Does this apply? Yes it does. It does apply to has many as well. So let's see, take a look at this. Um, has many paper books, through books, source, format, source type, paperback. Wait, hold on. this doesn't make any sense to me. Source option, option specifies the source association name. You only need to use this option if the name of the source association cannot be automatically inferred from the association name. So the the association isn't the problem here. The association is clearly website user roles. Let's see how this uh, worked out. Website first. Uh, we should have cluster users, which is the normal, the, the whole company basically. And we get a collection proxy with a number of users, in this case only one. Okay, and if we call users, we get uh, select users, inner join website user roles on users ID. Yep, that's what I meant. And in this case, we don't have any user because there is no data for this new association. Okay, so this, this actually worked. And it does make more sense having uh, these cluster users, if at all, and then these website users. I guess now I should just um, make sure that we didn't break anything with this. Exactly, let's disable this and run a test. So let's make this the test window. Now I've disabled the user's association, and since I've um, changed the name of the old user's association, we should get errors for each uh, location we've been using this. And I'm not sure if we actually have been using this. Oh yeah, we seem to have. Okay, I can see. Huh. Uh, 
interesting question how do we migrate from the old model where we use all company users to the new one I guess I'll go ahead and uh, simply make this explicit that we are using the cluster users the only place we've been using this method. still have at least one issue in the meantime let me check how these through associations need to be handled ideally Oh, that's actually a great idea. To retain backwards compatibility. We don't have a, an owner. Okay, that's interesting. I don't think I've even touched owner, but let's see. Um... How is owner defined? It's not defined at all, apparently. Oh, no, that's that's the error in my test here. Uh, that's my failing, my new test that's failing. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I like your idea, QP. Um, so we have clear and explicit names for the different kinds of user associations, and we get backwards compatibility using the user's alias. And... Uh, Uh, 
However, um, the only um, thing that makes me hesitate here is that um, I'd like to get rid of this uh, cluster users association completely in the long run. So um, where is it? It's uh, up here. Um, so uh, since it seems to work now, I guess I'll stick with making the new association the user's association. And I'll keep working with that. And what I do now is add a scope owner, owners, maybe, yeah, a website should be able to have many owners, um, using the permissions attribute in the website user roles here. So um, I guess that belongs here. And I guess I can steal the scope from another model like cluster. Does cluster have any scopes? Yeah, it does. However, I don't really understand what I've done here. You know, I do know what this means, but I don't know how it works, why it works. Interesting. Okay, let's let's take a look at scopes. What I don't get here is how this uh, user association comes together because we don't have any indication that we are even indirectly transitively associated with users. We are through company obviously but um, how does active record know what I mean here? So let's let's take a look at how scopes actually function oh wait uh, is user the argument for, uh, of course of course oh that, yeah 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 of course I pass in the user and then it returns all the clusters that are owned by this user um, using this um, query here. Okay, that's not what I meant or what I was looking for, actually. Um, well, okay, uh, it kind of is. Uh, let's, let's see if I can adapt this. So what I'm going to do is I'll have a scope user roles and I pass in a permission 
I could even use the name here, the access level. I pass in an access level. Yeah, I'm not very used to these lambda notations here, but this of course means that uh, that's the parameter list. Um, so, yeah, well, it's not that simple. because we're dealing with an association here. Let's see if we find an example rails through, through association scope. Something like this, the scope with join. Okay, just defining a method, of course, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like that. So... Basically, I'll actually create an owner's method where Joins. Joins website user roles where website user roles or role access level. equals uh, one, I think. That's not too important now. I guess I can provoke an error message by doing this and uh, see how, how, how close to my aim I've hit. been years since I've last dealt with uh, more complex queries like this. Um, so what I'd like to return is give me all the users that have um, owner level basically. So this through association website user roles um, has an access level and so I'd like to get all the users that have uh, level one. Boom. Undefined method joins. That's how it starts. So is it join?
You're right, this will return... If at all, it returns website user roles, but uh, still, just to... For me to understand this better, let's see... Okay, it doesn't even work with join. Okay, so... Um, they... How did they do it here? They ha simply have the meeting participations, that's the through association, and then meetings through that. And so we can actually um, query this directly. Okay. Oh no, um, and then they call meetings visible because that then filters. Okay. That's what you meant with starting with user. So I could simply say website user. Of course, yeah, website user roles. I'll get the through association. And then I say where website user roles access level equals one. So this gives me the, the, the roles. It does not pass me users yet. Yeah, you're always a step ahead of me. Thanks for your help. So let's see. Webs website first and then I can say owners now I get uh, website user roles uh, access level equals one and I could even actually use the this split query notation where we split the argument off in order to not get security issues. Should work the same, I guess. Okay, now, how do I get the users? Well, I, if I have these roles, I can simply call the user method on each of them but that's not very efficient is it um, let's try first owners now we get the user roles I, I could try to write this in here I guess so we'll say website So let's say uh, we have the owner roles. We can't just call users on that. How do I get from an from a collection of user IDs? Because um, we have these IDs here in here to the actual users. And do I even want that? I guess now we... That's where joins comes in, right? Joins users. Let's see, we can... Website user roles that's that and join users oh no not a join joins why doesn't that work 
can't join. Yeah, of course. Uh, website user to association named users. Maybe you misspelled it. User? Oh, yeah. So now it does. Can you try this? Users where website user roles. Access level equals one. While that might work, it will give me all the users that have ownership of any website. So in the end, I, uh, I in, in the optimum uh, result, I'll get all the websites this user owns or uh, any user owns. Uh, so it, I think I'm, I'm on the right track here, going from website. Selecting the website user roles. Joining this with users, and it does do the right join. And then we check if the website ID is this. Yeah. And now I can say where... Website user roles access level equals one. Well, let's say it equals question mark one. Since we don't have any users associated. Oh, you meant website users, which Oh, you mean because users is already the complete... You know, that would be ideal. I, I actually didn't hope, or I didn't have the hope that I can still access um, attributes of the through association. If this would work, uh, that would be that would be ideal. So let's see. Um, uh, website users, which is the through association, where website user roles access level equals one. Uh, of course, it's not a website, it's W. And it, I think it results in the same query users in a join website user roles. No, it's not the same query, but it goes through the through association. Users equals user ID, where website user roles, website ID equals my current website, and website user roles access level equals one. And uh, we pass website ID one. Grand. That's that's uh, that's the ideal solution because that's actually really readable. So we can say users where website user roles access level equals. Oh, that's so great. So I can actually use the through association here with users, but internally I still have access to the attributes of the through association. That's wonderful. Let's... And this means... since I'm... Yeah, of course it does make a join, uh, but I... Uh, I guess I was too pessimistic um, and expected that I won't have access to this access level attribute here because that's only the invisible middleman, basically. And it, it's not that invisible, uh, apparently. And uh, yeah, so I, it's easier than I had hoped. That's why I tried to join and do things, uh, even though, obviously, uh, 
Active Record already does it, so I, I don't have to do it manually. That's amazing. Oh, I'm really happy that it's that easy. So, um, since this is almost what I'm using in my test, um, I can at least use uh, owners now. So, I guess... I could say something like website owners to include the user. This test will still not work because there is no user association in create website. Let's uh, check if my owner's method actually works. Website first owners. Yep. It's empty, but uh, yeah. Well, I could try and, and create an association, I guess. Um, Take this website and I'll take the first user. And then I'll um, uh, I'll create a website. What's it called? Website user role? It's getting late. Yeah, website user role. Website use uh, role create user u website w access level one. Cool. So let's call w owners, and it does work. I'll get user one. Pretty cool. Okay, um, now create website now probably needs to get this user passed as an argument. If I'd like to use this association in the future to make things simpler, there always needs to be a user for whom this website gets created. So I guess create website will need to have a user as an argument all the time. How often do I use create website? Can't be too many times. It's in the websites controller. Of course it is. And that's even another method. Uh, that's this one here, create website. Interestingly enough, I'm passing in parameters here. Okay. Apparently I don't have to, and these websites get created with default parameters, I guess. Okay, seems pretty 
straightforward. But now I'll have to find out how these parameters are implemented. website okay we pass in attributes or otherwise we'll use an empty hash and in the end we merge these attributes into the okay into the website model fine So I guess Yeah, in in my in my controllers I'll have to pass in the current user and in my tests I need to pass in the the uh, test user. And uh, I guess I'll make these um, arguments some um, named arguments so I'll create you make it like this uh, always pass in a user and uh, and at the moment I am not using this user so let's make it an underscore user so Rubocop doesn't complain and um, you are right I could simply include it in the attributes but these attributes are used to create a new website instance and If this doesn't break the create call, it will at least make things uh, more confusing because it would um, it would look like the website actually had a user attribute and that's not what I'd like to do. So that's why I separate them up here. And uh, now I'll simply have to change the calls where we we use this call, and I think it's only in the websites controller and in the API websites controller. Oh, okay, we're going to have to break our API here. <sighs> Oof. Hmm. Interesting. That's the first time I get into this situation. So I could either follow your advice and, and make the user part of the parameters and maybe even strip it out of the parameters because before I call websites create or I'll have to add another parameter to our API call and either make it quick and dirty and inform the few users of our API that this has changed or I'll have to start a new API version. However, the old API will not even continue to work in the long run anyway then. Ah, that... I'm not sure if I... 
I really like to make this kind of decision at this time. Fuck. Oh, I didn't expect this to happen. Interesting. Now what do I do? Well, you are right, and it does make sense to, to change it. So just to, to analyze the situation, um, it's not the biggest surprise that this happened, because um, up until now, websites and users were very much apart from each other and only connected very indirectly, because a website is associated with a cluster, a cluster is associated with a company, and this company has users. And so, the in, in the past, the association used to be, okay, you get from website to users through cluster and company. And uh, as you've seen, um, we don't go this way very often in the code. And that's exactly what I'd like to change. I'd like to make websites and users very much close relatives. And um, so that we suddenly have to pass in a user to create website or to the websites create API call it's only natural, I guess, and simply has been missing so far, and you could even call this a design flaw. So I guess I go this route, and... Uh, actually use this here. I'll have to add the website owner here, so I'll add a web... Well, where, where are we? We are in the cluster, right? So we'll have to add Website user roles create I guess since we're not catching any errors, I should at least throw an exception here because um, now that I'm to doing two creates this should almost be an, a transaction and I'll have to think about that if I'd like to make it an, a, a transaction actually but uh, so far so good now Cluster spec will not work anymore because uh, we'll have to create a user here. All I have to pass into the user. Um, 
And in this case... I guess I'll have to create a user. case we actually have a, a user we're actually interested in. And this should more or less work. Unless I've broken all kinds of other things. Which of course never happens. Ouch. Validation failed. Main domain can't be blank. Wait, what? Of course it can't be blank. How did this test work before? test work in the first place. If I didn't pass in attributes that would make this valid. Oh, fuck, because I've added the bang signs. Ooh, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. I've called create website with uh, and I've never created valid things I guess it didn't matter in the best of all cases but yeah oof you can say that Sloppy sloppy. So what I'll have to do is um, uh, Wait mm. Okay, so uh, I guess now we should only have three failures. Four. So let's see, I, I 
think I, I, I thought I fixed the add router. Let's see why this still fails. This one here. Undefined method edge router address for website user role. Wait, what? Cluster spec one to one. Attributes for website seems to add an edge router address. Is that the case? Still doesn't make sense. Why do we call edge router address on website user role now? So apparently we return the website. Okay. Now oh, that makes sense. That we return the website when we call create website. Failures now. Okay, let's go to our tests and pass in proper attributes here. Hey, quick draw, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Happy to have you here. Yeah, long time no see. How are you keeping? It's getting dark outside. And it's still pretty warm in here. But that's because I've, I've closed my office door. Which I could open now, uh, since the kids are sleeping outside in, in a tent. You did move away from Elixir and Phoenix. To Node.js, okay. Well, both technologies I have n almost no idea about and uh, would like learn, would like to learn more about. So, attributes. Uh, that's that. That should fix this test. And uh, the same here. And the same here. And uh, all this repetition looks a bit like it requ will require a bit of refactoring. Yeah, it is JavaScript runtime, isn't it? And uh, yeah, but I, I have almost no knowledge of JavaScript. I've never been a front-end developer, and uh, I think the last time I, I did a bit of JavaScript was back in the jQuery time, when jQuery was all the hype. So tell how, how long I've been off the game, in terms of JavaScript at least. Okay, so this uh, should fix our test, and since only these old tests failed, this means that our new test here, no, uh, this was one of the three that failed, 
Okay, so let's see if our fourth test now also works with the with the owner. Yeah, so JavaScript or TypeScript is on my list of things to do when I have the time. And um, I'd like to learn proper JavaScript, maybe Node.js. Um, I guess that would be most relevant to my actual work, especially if I'm doing web development like here. Um, I'd also like to learn something functional. So Elixir would be top of the list here. And uh, well, that's basically it. JavaScript, TypeScript and something like Elixir. So now it's just our main test that's failing and it expected an em empty association relation to include the user, which it did not. And that's probably because I'll have to reload the website in order to have the owner's association or the, the website user roles association that's behind it to be populated. Let's give that another try. I can see where you come from, yeah. If if you have only a single person who is really familiar with that technology, it might be a good idea to think about a replacement technology. Still does not work. that it can't work. It actually should. Especially since our create calls here don't seem to... raise exceptions. Oh, I'm an idiot, of course. Actually... This should have been caught by an by a validation that's very strange that it does not validate that yeah well Presence, isn't it? Presence true, okay. So let's uh, see if. Oh yeah, QP 
you seem to be much more on the game as I am. It's really getting late for myself. Of course you are right. Uh, I'm using website as the starting model, so I don't have to pass in a website ID. So I'm not completely stupid. Which is a plus. However, now I guess the so the validation breaks. I know key presence. Pre wait, what? Validates presence true. Validates. See, that's the one disadvantage of uh, streaming late. I guess I can reach more people, but um, I have a full workday behind me normally. And uh, I guess it shows in these things. You're putting an all-nighter. Wow, okay, respect. Still doesn't work. So, you're basically doing what you're supposed to do tomorrow, and uh, so, if you don't, don't mind me asking, why are you doing it now instead of tomorrow? I might be able to guess the answer, but uh, you first. Okay, uh, first thing I don't like that... My screen is getting more and more red. Okay. Yeah, that's actually what I thought. It's just more fun. And yeah, uh, I can relate. Uh, doing things overnight with uh, some nice music and no distractions is often more pleasant than doing it during work where you get interrupted all the time. That again is one of the advantages of streaming late. There are no kids in my in my uh, case uh, running around screaming. Hopefully they are sleeping in their sleeping bags outside in the garden today. Now why does this thing, which, which should really be very simple, not work? Apparently it, it doesn't throw any exception, and uh, so there should be a user row created. But still there isn't any. So let's, let's go into the console and let's see. So you're stubborn too, and the thing you're doing isn't really a problem I'm stuck with, but it's just such a massive object to deal with, so I have to figure out the most efficient way to process it. Okay, well actually that doesn't sound too bad, it doesn't sound like you're a workaholic, uh, just that you'd like to do a good job and in turn that means that your work is important to you important enough to forego a bit of sleep however don't underestimate uh, 
the effects of uh, sleep deprivation. I can really tell when I didn't have enough sleep. Because that's when I sit here and uh, don't actually understand things. As I'm doing now. All right. So, yeah, okay, that's, that's another of these things. If you have a bit too much sleep, or sleep credit, as my latest sleep app tells me, um, yeah, it's easy to, to, to pull a uh, night shift. However, in the end, uh, you'll probably need your seven or eight hours. But anyway, hey, have fun. I'm sitting here and trying to get this working myself. And that's that's also pure work. So um, I could do this uh, during the day. I wouldn't have to add a few more hours in the in the evening, especially since I'm the business owner, one of the business owners. Now, Mr. Fullstack Sensei, why doesn't your method work like it's supposed to do? Let's start with a cluster. Cluster first. Create website. Create website. User, user first. Attributes, factory, bot, attributes, for, website. And, go. Ha! Huh. Okay. But that's actually... Go ahead and find a cluster that's not that's actually active, I guess. Wait. Oh, not clusters. Cluster active. Okay. Cluster active first. Now I should have it. Oh. Okay. Let's try this one. Okay. That did a lot of stuff. Among others, it added a website user role with uh, user ID 1 and website ID 14. So, this new website should have owners, but it does not. Does it have users? It does, but this user is not an owner. Ah, well, of course it's not. Or is it? I think that's the thing I forgot. Yeah. Access level one. Not only associate the user, but also make it an owner.
You worked security. Interesting. I completely agree. Uh, having a calm environment. Even when I was working a corporate job, um, sometimes I had to stay late. And having the whole office for myself, being able to blast music on the speakers and, and things like that, just gives you a sense of, of, of control and uh, yeah it really is a great thing and my tests are passing and I'll have to be honest um, I also have a lot of I'd call it hacker nostalgia, really. Maybe emphasizing the creative side of things. So telling myself I'm, I'm creating something and uh, I have my, back in the day I had my Jolt Cola and uh, maybe I've ordered a pizza and uh, was working on, on my code and, and building systems, which is in that sense completely different from working a an office job where you appear, uh, you, you, you go there like anyone else and uh, you're just a cog in, in, in the wheels and uh, I think that's that feels radically different. Now that I'm older and uh, have a family, I don't do a lot of work at night. Mostly it's if if I'm on call and I get an alert, so I have to to hop at, at, at my desk and and take a look at things. But from time to time it's really nice. Like tonight to be honest. It's a really great thing to make a bit of progress on something that's important to me and our customers that's interesting to to you folks and have a nice chat it's pretty awesome okay so let me think i think i've, I've reached my gold for today uh, assign initial website owner however uh, my api call will still not work You know what? I don't have to break my API because I can simply... Of course I, I don't have to break my API. I'll simply pass in the user that's um, either in uh, on the website or using the API. Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, that so I can finish this. Uh, even though I'm beyond the time I wanted to, to stream. Um, I only had planned for 90 minutes. Uh, let's let's finish this properly. Setting makes a, a, a huge difference. Um, that's what I'm enjoying most in having an, a home office. Uh, I have all the stuff that I need and unfortunately my, my company can provide me with all the tools I need so I have great computer I have uh, a great keyboard more than one <laughs> I have a bit of a mechanical keyboard issue but um, even that uh, being able to 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 use the keyboard that uh, I fancy at uh, that day um, is awesome and uh, shark tamer thanks for following I really appreciate you uh, following my stream. Welcome and I hope you enjoy. Alright, so um, now let's get the websites controller working. Uh, maybe simply run a full test suite even though 
the controller will break and the API controller will break as well. So let's close the models folder and go into the controllers here. So the websites controller needs to be changed somewhere here we have create website and first of all i need to pass in the parameters as a named argument and then i'll have to pass in the current user as the user That's pretty much it, I think. And the same goes for the API. Because... Um, Not, just not sure, do I have a current user here? A current user instance. Let's take a look at the API base controller. There is a current user. Okay, brilliant. So, that should suffice. Getting my test suite running. Well, often um, the first approach isn't the best approach, I guess. Um, but it's good to see something working and uh, maybe you can refactor your initial method um, or bend it a bit. I think you'll only have to be able to, to put your finger on what uh, you think is not right. You're iterating a lot. It's like a form which contains four objects, but they can contain five to seven objects, and some of these have an array and an object. Yeah, sounds like nesting hell. <laughs> on the other hand, it sounds like you're dealing with a complex data set here, and um, maybe actually making this uh, thing a, a single object with a few helper methods would be appropriate for the complexity of your data structure. Having something like a 
form response object that encapsulates everything. And makes handling the object easy by offering a few useful methods might be the right approach. Look at that, my test suite does work. So I guess uh, I'll have to fix a few style issues here. Line is too long. Um, wait, what? I don't think I've even touched this. Oh, simply by having to prefix this with cluster made the this uh, line too long. Okay, so I guess I yeah, to make this a, a multi-line block. This should be rewritten. Nested map, really? Yeah, but it's not my current concern. And too many lines, even though I allow 10 lines. Yeah, I, I think setup here is And we have two expectations in here anyway. I think I can get rid of this second one. Uh, if you're checking if it's the default edge router address, I don't think I'll have to. check if it's actually this address and I guess this solves my problem Now let's see if Rubocop can find a few more issues. today, I think. But I should be finished soon. These linting checks shouldn't be too much of a challenge. And then I can commit this stuff create a merge request and call it a night. I can call myself uh, lucky that I've been, been able to do this stream tonight because uh, 
I'm really stupid, and uh, I thought, well, let's update my streaming software right before the stream. What can go wrong? Even though this uh, did happen with, uh, well, uh, of course it, it went wrong and uh, my streaming software didn't work anymore. Had all si sorts of issues, couldn't access the webcam anymore and, and all that stuff. Um, and that's happened in the past when I still was using uh, OBS. And I thought I'd learned my lesson, but uh, now that I'm using Wirecast, I thought, well, uh, these issues don't work, don't don't happen with commercial software, do they? And so I uh, upgraded uh, Wirecast, and uh, it completely broke. And I had to find a trick to download the older version, which uh, luckily worked. I simply modified the download URL to try and get the previous version, which still was available. And uh, that fixed things. But yeah. Well, unlucky and uh, stupid. It simply don't upgrade your software right before you are going to use it. And I had that exact thought. Well, should I really do an upgrade now? And somehow I, I, I thought, well, it might even prevent issues. Uh, they, they don't release an update for no reason. But still, my previous version was uh, working flawlessly, and uh, so I Really should have waited until tomorrow, try it out and, and see if things were still working. So obviously I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the next update now. And I'll try that not five minutes before I'm going to start a live stream. Okay, so my, my linting checks are all green, that's nice. Breakman doesn't see any issues. And uh, our spec uh, should work successfully as well because it did before. So I guess I can go ahead and take a look at what I actually did. Okay, so I changed the controllers, I changed the models, and I changed the tests. Well, okay, I can commit this as a single change. Create websites with an owner. Uh, based on the new website user roles association, this change makes sure new websites have the current user associated as their owner. This closes issue number 483. Test was successful, nice. So we can push this. And create a merge request.
pretty cool. Okay, while the CI pipeline is working, uh, let's wrap this up by making a few notes. So, what did we learn? Um, through associations are, or let's give credit where credit is due, active record makes handling through association really easy, even attributes of the intermediate model are easily accessible. What else did we learn? Let me take a look at the code. I guess it's mostly the cluster spec. <laughs> oh yeah. Either catch validation issues or use the bang methods, dude. I can make owners as an association instead of an instance method. An association based on a condition? That would be learning number three, I guess. Can you give me an example or uh, a hint how this would look like? Active record association condition. Association proxy. Cases and name scope is a better alternative to using conditions. Okay, there are actually there's actually a conditions attribute. Interesting. Look at that. As many posts where well, I can then say where author ID equal. So I could say has many owners and then simply my where condition and other than a 
an instance method, I could then use this for joins. Mm -hmm. No problem. Let's give this a try. Even though the merge request is already there, I can send another update. Which means I probably go to my website model. And I guess I simply make this a scope. And pass in the where condition as a as a, as a lambda. Something like this. And I don't need an end here, and I move this up. below this. That's actually what I intended to build at the beginning, but I didn't know how to, to uh, how the syntax would work. So I made it, uh, uh, I used the first example I found on the internet and, uh, oh yeah, has many. So it's, it's not even a scope, it's actually an association. So maybe group this, group this like this. Association. Interesting. Let's see if this works in the console. And let's simply run the test suite. Oh, interesting. Rubocop then tells me specify an inverse of option for this. Inverse of? Huh, what would be the inverse of this? I'll have to look this up. So let's simply run our spec. So, website first. Owners does not work. Initialized constant website owner. That's why you mean I have to add a class. Class name would be user. And I also should replace the literal one here. Website first owners. I did something and then it broke. Oh, 
Oh, I can't reference users in there. That's because this stuff happens on the class level. And the class doesn't have a user's method. And the instance method obviously works on the instance level, where I do have this uh, user's association. All right, so I'll, I guess I'll stick with the previous, uh, I keep this in mind, but I'll stick with the previous version and uh, improve this one a bit by replacing the um, literal one here with website user roles how does this work uh, status active something like that Website user roles status active. No, that's not it. I don't even have. Wait, what? Website user role. No, I don't have the status. Uh... Oh, I think it's uh, status and then active in. No? Damn it. Join user yeah, that that would work, I think. Yeah, that's that should work on the class level. Interesting. I'll give that a try. But first I'll have to find out how this uh, status stuff works. Um I do have that on the cluster. Cluster has a status. Statuses, is it? Okay, okay. Website user role, statuses active. It's something like that. I, I don't remember myself. Um, but I have it somewhere in my code. Let's simply look for active. There should be something like this. Uh, maybe active wasn't the best choice. Here, website statuses active. So you were right. And oh, I'm an, I'm an idiot. It's not status. It's access level. It's getting late, and I'm not using. Yeah, I'm talking about owners. Oh, so it's a website user role. Still doesn't work. Uh, access levels. 
owner. Now we got it. Oh dear. Uh, so it's website user role. Access levels. Owner. So this is more readable. And uh, I could simply um, try your idea by creating another has many association has many let's call them website owners and um, so we Join users, but uh, in parentheses, where things, thingy, 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 and uh, this can't be brackets, something like this. Use the lambda method for multiline lambdas. Okay. I'll do that as soon as I see this working. So I guess I'll use the lambda method instead of... Uh, so website first website owners. No. Oh, yeah, we need a bit more joins. No, we can't go directly through users, so we have to. We'll have to first join website user roles, right? Because users will not use this uh, association up here. It will use the users mo the user model, so the users table. Website user roles. Okay, I'll trust you. Users where yada yada yada. Class name user. Right? I think that's not as re readable as the instance method. It's getting too complicated. Wait, what? No, no, uh, now I don't even get the. Nope, nope. Sorry, but I'll drop that. Still, I'll group this a bit better. Two and a half hours now. All right, let's get this done. I think that's perfectly readable. And uh, I'll leave it at that.
Good night, QP. Thanks for all your help. You've been a great inspiration and help. Uh, I really appreciate it. Have a good night. And I guess uh, with this push... Oh, I've already done a push. See, I'm getting tired. Um, I think I'm done. Next steps to be defined. I have no idea, but I also don't care at the moment. I don't. Um, we might already have a result from our pipeline. That's the wrong one, but good to see it's green as well. Uh, here, the pipeline is still running. Anyway, I'll call it a night. I thank you for, for being with me. It's been a lot of fun and it's been very productive. I've made progress on my user management here. I've learned a bit, refreshed my memory on active record through associations. And uh, I'll see you next week. I plan, no, on, on, uh, I'll see you at, uh, on the weekend. Um, I'm going to do another live coding stream on Saturday at uh, 5 p.m. Irish time. So uh, if you can, drop by and say hello. Until then, thanks for watching and uh, take care.